Hey y'all, Kirby Ash here. This is my third video of Kingdom Step Mamas or Kingdom Step Parents or what the heck am I doing? Who knows? Maybe it doesn't need a name. Maybe it does need a name. You guys tell me, what should I name this? Or am I alone out here just making videos talking to myself? Either way, that's fine. I wanted to jump on really quick while I have the time and make a quick video about all those pesky, lovely reminders that you are a step parent. Now, anyone who's a step parent probably already knows what I'm talking about. Those everyday little things that pop up and seem to be in your face. It's just that little reminder of like, hey, by the way, you're not the bio parent, you're the step parent. I'm sure this applies to step parenting in general, but as I've stated before, I'm going to be focusing more on the step parents who have stepped into the role. Wow, that's hard to say, step parent who stepped into the role. Stepped into the role of full-time parent to their stepchild or stepchildren. So really, I think one of the reasons why this gets annoying is especially when you are full-time mom and little things pop up that remind you this, that you're the step parent. You're like, what, like, what else do I have to do? What else do I have to do? And secondly, I think it gets annoying because I don't need to be reminded that I'm the step parent, right? I know I'm the step mama. You know, I'm the step mama. <laughs> My son knows I'm the step mama. But alas, life reminds you of these little things. And so I just wanna talk about this space here where on one hand, it feels so annoying, like the world has to remind you constantly that you're a step parent. And then on the other extreme, it's like no one understands that you're a step parent. So just gonna walk through some of my quick little personal experiences with this and how they've kind of made me feel over the past I guess two years as a step parent. So the first thing that pops in my mind is the legal system. Y'all, after this custody battle, I realized very quickly that I have no role or place or value in the court's mind. I don't. I just don't. They used my word as testimony. They used me as a witness but I was not considered a parent. I just wasn't. And that was a little bit difficult for a few different reasons. The main one being that I had been the one who had taken all of this time and I was the one who was the most involved with the case. I was the one that had to record conversations with my stepson talking to me about things that had happened to him because he, he, he felt safe enough with me. So even though all of these things that are being shared were things that I had discovered and we had built this relationship up so that he could, you know, express these things to me, soon as it came to the court, I didn't matter. The only time, in fact, that I did matter was when Bio Mama needed something to be mad at. And she could present whatever she could find into the court's eyes of why I would not be a fit mom. No joke, that'll be another video, but there's actually a legal document out there of why I would not be a fit mother or capable to be a fit mom. So, gut-wrenching, yes. Does it truly matter? No. At the end of the day, I am the full-time mom to our beautiful son. So, the court system is always a struggle. And I'm gonna loop back around to that at the end of this video. But the second thing that really frustrated me was in the school system. The school system. Now, his teachers didn't even know I was a step parent. They just assumed I was his mom. I mean, I am his mom, but don't let me forget I'm the step mom, right? The teachers didn't know and the teachers didn't really care. They have to have their legal documents to provide proof and yada, yada, yada. I get that. I accept that. I appreciate that. But it's always an extra step, even with the school systems. So when we got him registered for school, I couldn't just say, yeah, I'm the one you contact. No, because I'm the step parent and me and my husband are legally married. 
So it's not even that we are just um, in a relationship. I share the last name of both my husband and my stepson. However, when it comes to being a point of contact or a person to pick him up from school or drop him off from school or get notified of anything going on, this school system had to get a written thing, a written document from my husband with his signature saying, I am allowed to have contact. <sighs> Again, frustrating, frustrating. Does it ultimately matter? No. Is it frustrating? Yes. So those were two big system ones that I was like, okay. And then obviously there's going to the doctor and there's things like that. For some reason, those are actually a little bit easier. Um, I think because it's kind of a one-time visit type of deal. But those things can and will get under your skin if you allow them to, especially when it's being popped up in combination with each other over enough time you're gonna start getting really really frustrated you're gonna want to stand up on that little chair that's at the registration at the front school office you're gonna want to stand up on that chair and go i am his mom i take care of him I'm the one who has gotten him ready for school. I'm the one that made sure that he didn't have to repeat a grade because he missed so much school with bio mom. I'm the one who X, Y, Z. These instances make you want to justify why you're more of a parent than maybe the biological parent ever was. Now, let me pause there. That is a slippery slope. I've been down it. I'm trying to avoid it. Often, <laughs> often. Naturally, when you're in a spot where you have come in and taken over the full-time role of a parent, you naturally want to have this place to express that you have taken over a job that you never should have. Now, hear me. I don't regret any of this. In fact, I don't know what I would do without being my son's mom my stepson's mom. I don't know what I would do. I love every moment of it, every challenge of it. But in a perfect world, should I have had to step in as the full-time mom? No. Should I have to be the one to help him heal from his biological mom? No. But I do it and I do it willingly because I love him. So when little things pop up, like you have to get permission to be the one who we can contact about an event at the school, or you have to get permission to be able to drop him off to school, you have to get permission to do what a normal parent should rightfully be doing, it gets frustrating. And it makes those tables start to turn where you go, but I do all of this. Be careful there, be careful. Don't start expressing that in the wrong way. Take it from me, I have. I'll make another video about that though. So let me also share another area that it's frustrating, that it's a reminder of being the step parent. I wanna to touch a little bit on how it seems like other people don't understand. Sometimes when you become a step parent, you think, well, I'm doing this full time, I'm the mom full time. I can relate to other moms, and you can but it's harder for them to relate to you. I'm not entirely sure why. I think it's because there's this added layer of caution that we have to take as step parents. We have to build up the trust in the relationship with our step kids. We have to not tread lightly, but we have to be so intentional with our step kids if we want to have success at parenting if we want to have this relationship where it is just very much so mother-son relationship we have to be so intentional and i don't think that biological parents completely understand that aspect and i don't think that they should i don't think that they should but where that comes into play when it comes to frustration or feeling a little bit on the alone side is when your spouse or significant other doesn't get it either. My husband didn't. He still doesn't fully. But I'll tell you, he would have uh, conversations with me of going, don't label yourself as the step parent anymore. You're just the mom. You're the mom. You do everything for him. And I appreciated that he went through the list that I just did. You take care of him. You make sure he's at school. You make sure he's okay. You're helping with all this. He went through the list and I appreciate that. But he doesn't understand that there is a factor that makes it different. 
And a couple things have helped him realize that. One, the fact that he had to write out a document saying I had permission. He saw it. He said, man, I didn't realize because if you were biological, you could just march in, get him enrolled in school. And the other thing was is that I think he finally realized that in the court's eyes, I don't mean much. Sometimes you have to put things in extreme for people to understand it. Now, God forbid this would never happen. But if something ever happened to my husband, Jackson would not be mine. My stepson would not be mine. Chances are, until we can figure out how to completely cover this legally, he would go back to biological parents. Biological mom. That's a terrifying thought. It's terrifying. And you step parents who have stepped in as the full time parental role, you know what type of fear I'm talking about there. That at the end of the day, if something earth shattering were to happen, that you are not granted the permission to just do with your child what needs to be done to protect your child in a way that they need to be protected. There would be no way that I could just take my stepson and leave if we were in a horrible situation. It wouldn't happen. I'm just the step parent. There's that word just again. So you know that that lingers in the back of your head sometimes. And unless you get to the point where you can legally adopt, which is probably the route we're going to try to take, I think that fear will always be in the back of our minds as parents. Just put the step in front of it doesn't change the fact that you have a lot of fear. In fact, I think we have more. At the end of the day, you can do what's best for your kids no matter what. At the end of the day, you moms can do whatever needed for your kiddos. As a step parent, there's an added step, literally, in front of the name, but also um, physically. Like there would have to be an extra step taken before you could do what's best. There's nothing more frustrating than that. I remember when we had um, Jackson for the first bit and he was so miserable, he would cry when he tried to eat because the dental neglect was so extreme. And the court system had told me I was not allowed to take him to the doctor. That made no sense. Not allowed to unless it was emergency. And I finally got fed up and said, you know what? This is an emergency. My child can't eat. I'm taking him. That was frustrating though, because what was really happening was this big, huge reminder of, hey, you may know what's best for him. You may know how to do what's best for him. You may have everything set up to get him what he needs, but you're still a step parent, so you have to get approval first. Now, much of that has changed because we do have full custody now. But I will say that was the hardest part that I had to walk through, was feeling like I had to get everything approved just to be a mom. So difficult. And the last thing that I kind of want to hit on um, is that... One of the hardest ways for me, and I'm going to be vulnerable here and see if anybody relates. I have always had a heart of redemption. I have always had a heart where if biological mom can get her life together and be in our son's life and in our son's world, I'm for it. She's going to have to prove a lot of things first, but I'm for it and she knows it. So when the few phone calls here and there happen... And they always tend to happen when we're doing really well. They disrupt things. They just do. I'm always going to allow it. I will always allow them to talk. I will never do what she did and keep us from, well, keep her from talking to him like she did to us. But my heart is never more aware that I'm the step parent than when I've been being called mom for a while. And then one phone call of someone who can really not even talk that well to her child changes everything because now I'm talking to mommy. Hey, Kirby, I'm talking to mom. Now, on the outside, I'm going, that's great, buddy. That's awesome. On the inside, my heart is breaking because I went, I just went back down to Kirby. I just went back down to step parent. It took all this time and all this effort and all these prayers and all of this intention to build this relationship where I'm mom. And then two minutes of a phone call once a month 
I'm Kirby again. Now, as time has continued, that has happened less and less. The other day he said, Mom, talk to my other mom while I go to the bathroom. I don't think that made her feel great, but it made me feel pretty good. That does begin to change as time continues, but I just have to be honest, the one that hurts the most is that. And I don't blame him. I get it 100%. That's his mama. But it's like out of the 99.9% .9 of the time in his life, I'm mom. But that 0.1%, Mom is back in the picture, and it hurts, but I know it's best for him, so I will never prevent it. Well, as long as it is healthy. Mm. So y'all, let me know, let me hear from you. What are those reminders that you're the step parent? Or what are those ways that you feel like you're doing the best you can and people just don't get it? For my husband and I, um, it would come up a lot when it came to um, discipline. Coming in as the full-time mom, but really I'm a stepmom to now eight-year-old boy, discipline looks different coming from biological dad and stepmom. It just does. It's a different factor. Let me know what you think. Let me know what areas it may bother you or what areas you found out that help you to combat that just a stepmom thing. What helps me is that every time I'm feeling that build up, because it does, I think, you know what, at the end of the day, I'm who he depends on. At the end of the day, I'm the one holding him. At the end of the day, my heart is to be the best mom, stepmom, friend, counselor, educator, whatever he needs. My goal is to do that the best I can, no matter what the label. And so far, even though I'm not perfect and it is hard and we've hit so many crazy hard things, at the end of the day, that's what I'm doing. And no label is going to change that. No word just or step is going to change that. So I love you all. If you're watching this, I hope you know you're loved. I hope you know the value and the weight you carry into your stepchildren's lives. You have a beautiful opportunity, as I say in all my videos, to get to know them and to value them and treasure them. I hope that this one makes you feel a little less alone. And I hope it also lets you kind of get out some frustrations in a healthy way. Yeah, you don't have to remind me I'm the step parent. I'm very, very aware of that. But really, I'm full-time mom. So I love you guys. Next time, I might be sharing about something a little bit more difficult. I have not fully decided yet. I'm praying. So it'll either be something very difficult about what you do when bio parent is in crisis. How do you support your child, your stepchild? Or I may decide to share how it affects your relationship with your significant other. Either way, it should be a fun one. <laughs> I love you guys. I hope you all have a beautiful day wherever you are. Whenever you hear this, know you're loved and you're valued. And I will talk to you next time. Bye, y'all.